Are you battling to hit the side of a barn door with your spear gun or is your new roller gun frustrating the hell out of you? Today I'm going to give you 8 tips on making sure your gun is 100% accurate. Hi, I'm Chris Coates from Coatsman's Workshop. If you haven't been watching my videos, I've been immersed in the spearfishing industry for over 20 years, running exclusive trips to all corners of the globe, blogging, um, I was an editor of a spearfishing magazine for a number of years and over the last 10 years been building custom spear guns for my clients. If you haven't already, please check out my recent uh, series called Unrolling the Roller. The link is in the description or above over there. It covers everything from understanding roller guns to the setups you need for each of your guns. In this edition of Unrolling the Roller, I'm going to be giving you eight ways to ensure that your guns are as accurate as possible and remove any doubt when pulling the trigger. Plus one additional tip to help you transition into the world of roller guns. But before we get there, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get notified for when I put up new videos. The comments below, they become a really good Q&A and they have lots of updates and information on them. Every video I put up, I'm learning something new from the community. So it's a really great resource. Go and check them out on the videos. When talking about accuracy and, and shooting straight, you need to start with your spear gun. You often hear guys saying that one brand is uh, more accurate than another brand. Uh, when I hear this, I just switch off. It's complete BS. With the right um, setup, you can make almost any gun um, shoot straight. That's of course, unless the gun is completely dysfunctional. Also make sure that you're using the correct gun. Big guns are difficult to maneuver and limit your ability to take advantage of the best shots. Likewise, guns with insufficient power and range will leave you frustrated and only dent your confidence. I do cover a fair bit about this in previous videos, so make sure you're using the right gun for the right job. If you have a roller gun and not sure how to set it up, um, I suggest going and watching the Unrolling the Roller series from the beginning. The link is up in the corner over here. And um, make sure your guns are set up well. Um, so let's climb into it. Here are my eight tips on shooting accurately. Okay, number one, and that's straight shafts. You can have everything else set up right, but if your shaft is bent, you're stuffed. If you're battling with accuracy, checking your shaft is straight is the very first thing you need to do. Now you can, the easy way is you can just check down the shaft to see if it's straight, um, but it's very difficult to see any subtle deflections. The best way is to actually roll the shaft, but if you're looking down your shaft and you can see there's a bend, then your shaft is 100% stuffed and uh, just chuck it away. Rolling your shaft is really easy. All you need is the back of two chairs or any two parallel surfaces. If you're on a boat or something like that, you can just take um, two spear gun barrels. Um, that will work well. Take your shaft, um, tape up the, the barb with some tape, masking tape or electrical tape's fine. And as long as you've got two level parallel surfaces, you can roll your shaft. And when you roll your shaft, it should be smooth, it shouldn't wobble at all, and you can see that it's nice and straight. This is a bench shaft, and you can just see it, it wobbles, it doesn't want to roll. This is a very bench shaft, actually, and is no good. But you'll pick up even the slightest wobble, and if you consider that if your tri-cut is even off-center, that will affect your accuracy. How much more will a bend shaft affect your accuracy? So even if it's slightly bent, I, would, um, I wouldn't use it. I would always opt for um, a perfectly straight shaft. Now, if you're checking your shaft and it's on a gun, you've got your shooting line attached um, and you don't want to take it off, obviously it's easier to do it without your shooting line, but you can still do it. Tape up your barb. Grab your shooting line on to one side, your mono, your Dyneema, and you just twist that, that line. And you can see this shaft is, is perfectly straight. I'm just twist, it rolls nice and easy just, just with me twisting the line. So you can check your shaft if it's still got the line on it, but it's not as easy. If you have uh, double bob shafts like this one here, you don't even need to um, take them up. The, the bobs um, counterbalance each other and uh, you can just roll them. You can see the shaft is straight. If your shaft is bent, I would just replace it. It's no point in using a bent shaft and I would go as far as to even make sure that the shaft in the shop is straight before you buy them. Just put them on a, on a level surface, 
Give them a roll, make sure they're straight before you pay good money for your shafts. Number two, the correct shaft. Now that you've ensured that you're not using a bench shaft, make sure you're using the right shaft for the setup that you're using. I found that a lot of guys are using shafts that are too long and thin on roller guns. This, the longer and thinner your shaft is, the more flexible it is, and the more chance of it being overpowered and whipping when it comes out the muzzle of your roller gun. This wobble or whip um, will cause an accuracy and also slow your shaft down. So make sure you're using the right shaft for the setup that's, um, on, that's on your gun. A general rule with uh, roller guns is the shorter the shaft, the better. Um, again, go and check out the videos in the description below and use those setups as a reference. Okay, number three, tune your barb. If your shaft is the correct length and diameter and is straight, the next thing to check is your barbs. This is obviously a whole lot easier to check if you are shooting at a target in a pool, but you can do it in the, in the ocean. Your barb on your shaft when flared out will um, affect the height of the shot. So if this is flared down, it's gonna cause lift and that will um, lift the shot, the, your shot. If your barb is on the top and flared out, it'll then push your shaft down. And that is how you can actually adjust um, the height of your shot. On a single barb shaft, like this one over here, um, you can only really flare it out to lift it up, but if you're shooting too high, you can always go and flatten your um, flopper down. When it comes to your bobs on your shafts, um, it's very important to make sure that your um, bobs aren't tight and they are closing properly. Um, if your bob is not closing properly and it's sitting out like that, for example, it will cause your shaft to shoot high. Or in a case of a double bob, if your top um, bob, which is this one, is sitting open like that, it'll also, it'll do the converse, it'll make your shaft shoot low. Now, a lot of guys battle with um, double bobs because um, this top bob causes extra drag over the, the top of the shaft, which generally causes the shaft to shoot low, but there's an easy remedy to this. Um, you just take your crimping pliers, or any pliers for that matter, and you just flare out this last little section of the bob about a middle two back, back on it. You just bend that out like that. So now you'll see there's a slight little flare on the on that on that bob. That that little flare there will push the shaft up, and you'll shoot between five and ten centimeters higher at range with that little flare. Now. If for some chance that uh, this shaft was shooting too high and, all you, and you wanted to make it shoot lower, all you'd have to do is you just take it and you just flatten that flare off and with a hammer. And then once that's flat, that will shoot, um, that won't lift the shaft anymore. A handy tip is to go and cut about a six mil groove in, this, in a thick, strong part of your knife. And this way you can adjust your bob in the water by just taking your, your knife, putting the bob into the groove like this, and then you can flare it out. Here we go, little flare. It's a really, really simple to do. And if you're, you can go both ways, you can even flatten the bob down. A groove on the side of your knife is a really handy tool. Okay, number four is band setup. Um, now with roller guns, this is not so much of an issue as it is with conventional guns. Roller guns are fairly forgiving. That said, if you do have the wrong band setup on your gun, you can run into accuracy issues, uh, whether it's a roller gun or not. With roller guns, generally, if the guys are underpowered, they don't have any accuracy issues other than the shaft dropping at range. But when the guys go and start uh, maxing out their rubbers on roller guns, you start putting more um, power into the shaft. So if your shaft is too long and whippy, um, that's gonna be an issue. Or if it's got a slight bend, um, any little underlying issue you have, 
the more power you put into that shaft, the more of it a problem it's going to be. So make sure that you have the right setup on your guns first and straight shafts and that you're not overpowering your gun unnecessarily. The way the gun shoots if smooth and with low recoil will only help your accuracy. What I mean by this is that if you're flinching or having to anticipate the recoil, this is only going to affect the way you shoot. If you need more power and range, always opt for a longer gun rather than trying to get your 110 or 90 to try shoot like a blue water gun. When it comes to pretension and accuracy, because of recoil affecting accuracy, full pretensioning your rubbers is the only way to go. I cover this extensively in the second video of the Unrolling the Roller series. One of the most asked questions I get is micro ball rubbers and the difference between reactive and progressive rubbers and what is best. Micro ball rubber in my opinion only makes inserting wishbones difficult and adds little or no value whatsoever. It's not like it magically adds any extra power. The strength of your rubber is directly related to the volume of the rubber. Micro ball adds a small amount of volume to the inside of your rubber but in most cases the guys then go down in outer diameter. Work out the area of a cross section of rubber. Subtract the internal bore and compare the difference between a standard bore and a micro bore. And the difference is nowhere near as substantial as changing the, uh, the outer diameter of the rubber. Rubber with a 2.4mm um, ID is, is fine and that's what I generally stick with. I mean, um, at the end of the day you generally land up cutting the rubbers to what is comfortable to load anyway. So just stick with the standard bore rubber. It's a lot less complicated. Then you have the guys that are all about reactive and progressive rubbers. In my opinion, this is just marketing babble. Um, I think the correct term would be high or low modulus rubber if you want to get technical. It just does not sound as cool. Harder, and, harder or high modulus rubber can give um, you more power, but at, at the expense of recoil. Softer, low modulus rubber um, does not give you as much power, but will um, give you um, a smooth and accurate shot. Generally, the stiffer your rubber is, the longer you have to cut the rubbers, and the softer the rubber is, the shorter you have to go. Personally, I don't like high modulus um, or hard rubber with rollers. I prefer softer, springier rubber. That said, one of the most important things to look for in rubber is low soak off over time. Spear guns are often loaded for hours in between shots, and uh, your rubber should not lose much load over this time. Um, Primeline Latex is probably one of the best in the market in, in this regard. You can have everything right but your rubber setup is the one thing that's going to vary the most from person to person. If you have any doubts about your rubber setups, have a look at the previous videos, start there and tweak your rubbers accordingly. Pretty much everybody who's tried the half barrel plus five has come back with a thumbs up. So use that as a starting point. Number five, double bridled wishbones. Earlier on in this video I made a comment on guys who say one brand is more accurate than another. For the most part I really do believe this but when it comes to roller muzzles they are not all created equal. One of the greatest issues with roller muzzles is the bridle riding up the rails of the muzzle lifting the back of the shaft as the spear leaves the gun. Using a double bridle wishbone like this one over here you can overcome poorly designed muzzles and improve accuracy and eliminate issues with the back of the shaft lifting at the muzzle. Um, check out the video in the right hand corner to see how to test your muzzle and to rectify the problem. I guess you can make um, a badly designed roller muzzle um, accurate after all using one of these. Okay number six is your shooting line setup. Now with roller guns you're generally going 10 to 20 centimeters shorter than you would have on your conventional gun. While this has a host of advantages, it does reduce the length of your shooting line and therefore the range of a single wrap and will also affect your gun's accuracy at the end of your single wrap range. What happens is as the shaft comes to the end of its range, the slack in the shooting line, as it gets taut in the water there's, a, there's resistance and that will pull the back of the shaft and cause the back of the shaft to wobble and deflect and that causes the the shaft to actually shotgun right at the end of your shooting, um, your single wrap shooting range. With short roller guns this is frustrating because single wrap range is where the gun is still very effective. This means that you have to go to double wrap. This double wrap now means that 
It allows the shaft to hit the target at full single wrap range without being affected by the shooting line taking up slack behind it. You could test this theory um, for yourself by setting up a target at single wrap range. Um, so the shaft just hits the target, take a few shots and then move the target back a shaft length so that the shaft penetrates all the way through the target and compare the difference in accuracy. The, the, the test where you just reaching the target, you'll find that you'll be inaccurate in the, and you'll be shooting all over the place and with a little bit further back, you'll be spot on every single time. And that's just your shooting line. So when guys ask me why I always use double wrap, it's not because I want to shoot um, full double wrap distance, even though some of the guns can actually shoot that far, it's because I want to be accurate at a practical range, which is just past a single wrap range on most uh, roller guns. There is, however, a downside to double wraps though, um, specifically when hunting on the reef. Um, you're now giving the fish those extra few meters of shooting line to run and reef up. So if you're using a double wrap, you need to be conscious about quickly taking up your shooting line after shooting the fish to make sure that the fish doesn't disappear over a ledge or um, into a hole and reef you up, especially when there's lots of current. Number seven, keep all your guns the same. Keeping all your guns the same will reduce the need to adjust from one length gun to another. Keeping all your grips the same, this will ensure that the angle of the grip is not changing and this is very important, especially if you use the point and shoot technique when for aiming. Um, trigger pull is another thing that needs to be consistent regardless of the load on the mechanism. So from a small gun to a big gun, your trigger pull needs to be the same. So every single time you pull a trigger, regardless of length or power, the gun feels the same. So for this, keep all your grips and mechanisms the same. Likewise, keep your muzzle ends of the gun the same, or as close as possible. So when you look down the gun, your vision is the same, regardless of what gun length you have. This also goes for the overhang of the shaft. If the overhang on your shaft for different guns it varies too much, you'll have a hard time adjusting from one gun to another, especially if you aim off the tip of your shaft. Keeping everything uniform will ensure that you'll be able to flip-flop between guns even on the same day without having to adjust or messing with your confidence. Number eight, remove all doubt. One of the most important, often not spoken about factors in shooting straight is your confidence. You can have everything dialed in a great accurate gun in hand and if your confidence is low, you'll end up second guessing yourself in a situation when the pressure is on. You need to be 100% confident in your gear and yourself to make good decisions and take advantage of the best opportunities that come your way. This is why pull testing new guns is so important. Getting the gun dialed in and building confidence is the most important thing you can do with a new gun. Better yet, as in the previous point, keeping all your guns the same, this way there's almost no need to go through the learning curve of a completely different gun. This is actually one of the primary reasons why I developed the CDR double roller. I have so many clients that are huge Rob Allen fans and every time I went, they went on a dive trip, they wanted something with a little bit more vuma than a standard Rob Allen could uh, deliver. Um, so they got big blue water guns and most of those guys couldn't adjust with confidence to their new blue water guns purely because they didn't use those guns on a consistent basis, no matter how good those guns were. So now with the CDR, they have the same Rob Allen grip. The vision down the barrel is pretty much the same as their regular roller guns and it makes the whole transition from their normal guns they use every day to a bigger blue water gun um, very easy and seamless. Confidence is everything. If you've been spearfishing for any length of time you'll know what it's like when everything is going right and you just can't miss. But you'll also know how frustrating it is when you can't seem to hit anything. In many cases when you start to miss fish on a day it's because of a bent shaft or a dodgy barb. If you don't pick up on that it's your shaft, it will destroy your confidence and you'll start to try compensate and you'll continue to mess up valuable opportunities. The best solution is to always have a complete gun that is 100% perfect to swap out to, or at very least have an extra straight shaft on the boat. As much as possible, I always try to have two of the same or similar gun that I can swap out on my dive, be it a boat dive or even a shore dive. This way, if I take a shot and miss, and no, it wasn't because I took a flyer, or even if I slightly um, suspect there's an issue with the shaft, especially if I've just shot a fish, 
I could swap out to a good gun and never second guess myself. Okay, one bonus last tip and that's adapting to roller guns. When specifically talking about roller guns and transitioning from old school conventional guns, some guys battle to make the adjustments. I think it's primarily for these two reasons. Number one, they have one foot in the roller side and the other back in their standard guns. Rollers and con conventional guns shoot completely differently. Conventional guns kind of lob the shaft with recoil while rollers feel like they're not doing anything. So that's gonna be something, if you're flip-flopping between the two, you're gonna be constantly trying to adjust. Secondly, the guys start with longer rollers. They hear about the power you can magically get out of a roller, then they get the biggest badass roller they can for their next big trip. Almost without exception, the guys who start with smaller rollers adapt and transition into rollers easier. I think it's for two, these two reasons. Um, for one, the small rollers really show off a roller's capabilities well, and the guys generally shooting prey that are far less consequential. So they get a bunch of no pressure shots on fish to figure the gun out. This builds confidence and surety in the guns. The guys who go straight to the 120s and the 130s often land up targeting quality fish and stuff it up. Um, worse still, it's on their annual spearfishing um, getaway with only a few opportunities and straight away there's no confidence in the gear. And the gun lands up on the boats in lieu of what the tried and tested old conventional gun. So my advice is if you're thinking about getting into rollers or battling with rollers, get the shortest gun that suits your diving and go and shoot a bunch of fish for the pot. No pressure. Take all your conventional guns, sell them, burn them, give them to a mate you don't like. Take them completely out of the equation. Force yourself to take the time to make the adjustments. As long as you are keep going back to your conventional guns, you'll have to keep on making those adjustments and how you shoot. And this is only going to cause you to second guess yourself when under pressure. Okay, so let's just do a quick recap to ensure that your guns are 100% accurate. Number one and the most important on the list is make sure your um, shafts are straight. Check your shafts, make sure they're straight and you'll never go wrong. Number two, correct shaft. Make sure you're not using a shaft that's too thin or too long. Tune your bobs. It's a simple thing to do and once you get the hang of it, especially if you've got double bobs, uh, you'll be shooting spot on. Correct band setup. Um, Half barrel plus five, that's the best place to start. Double bridle wishbone, especially if you've got a, a roller muzzle that you're not too sure about, try a double bridled wishbone. It really does improve accuracy. Um, double wrap on your shooting line. Just take out any inaccuracies at single wrap range. Keep all your guns the same. Make sure your handle, your mechanism, and your muzzles are the same. So when you go from a 90 to a 110 to a 120 or a 130, there's no adjusting. You're just gonna pick up that gun, it's gonna feel the same every single time, and you'll be killing fish. And number eight, remove all doubt. If you miss a fish on a day and you know it wasn't because you aimed badly or you took a flyer, just take that gun, put it on the boat, grab the gun that's 100% um, perfect, you've tested it, the shaft straight, and you'll never have to second guess yourself. That way, the next fish that comes along, you'll square it up and your confidence will stay high. And that's the most important thing with being accurate is making sure your confidence is always high. And bonus tip, um, go all in on rollers. Um, point is having some rollers and some conventional guns. Conventional guns, in my opinion, are pretty much obsolete. There's no reason to use them. And uh, climb in there. Um, they work and build your confidence with uh, good equipment. So on a day-to-day -day basis, the first and last tips are the most important. Always make sure your shaft is straight. Always have another shaft or gun on the ready to swap out if you think your shaft is bent or you have a problem with your gun. I hope this has been super helpful. Please drop me a comment below if you have any other tips or anything that will help um, improve accuracy. If you have not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified um, when the next video is up. In the next video, I'll be covering aiming techniques and tricks to never miss. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.